Hey everybody, this is uh, the tutorial for your very next sketch, which is um, using oil pastels. Just getting that to focus. Okay, so oil pastels may be new to some of you. You may have done it in eighth grade with me if you had me for eighth grade. Um, they're interesting, uh, like crayons, but much blendier. And so this is a good choice for this sketch because it's a good intro for you guys moving into painting soon. You'll get um, some experience with how colors mix and blend and layer together. So we are going to be doing this drawing. This is also done with oil pastels, so I'll be using this as the reference and hopefully it turns out very similar or better. Okay, three donuts. So first one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what colors you need. There's a big class pack of oil pastels that you'll get most of them from. Um, but then there is a couple other colors you might want to supplement. So um, you can pause this video after I lay these all out and grab what you need. So there's this one. It's sort of like a reddish brown, sort of like a rusty color. You will need that. You will need a blue. You will need a pink. A white. You will also need red orange. Um, now in the class pack there's two. There's a darker red and a red orange. Um, red orange is more of what we use for this one. Let me see if there's anything else I think you need. And some yellow. We'll use very sparingly. And black. And this light sky blue as well. Okay. Now you can get those colors. Um, I do recommend if you can. I hopefully will have enough for everybody. I have another set of oil pastels. Um, that you might want to use that have kind of more of a more neutral brown. So, you know, like I said, this is kind of a, a rusty reddish brown. Um, I have two other kinds of brown from a different brand. You might want one of those as well. And actually, a nice kind of yellowish yellow ochre brown as well. So, you can definitely get by with not having all of these because, like I said, they mix and blend like paint, but. Um, I'll probably be bouncing back and forth between all of these. So you can either get them all now or you can just pause the video whenever I switch colors and grab the one you need. Whatever works better for you. But for now I will start with getting this laid out. Um, the one thing you do got to be careful with the oil pastels is they're, they're very soft and very waxy. The camera doesn't pick this up but I already have spots all over my paper from this which you are going to get. So kind of just try to be okay with that with some spots and some marks. Um, the more you work with them, the more you learn how to kind of work around them and prevent them. But for your first time, don't panic when you end up getting flecks of color. I already have one already in random spots of your paper. Okay, so we have three donuts we're drawing. So we're going to start about halfway up on the paper to the right side. And you're just going to do an oval. So remember, we're fitting three, so you don't want to make it too huge. But if you do them too small, they'll be hard to shape. So I'm going to do mine darker than I normally would so you can see it. Okay, so about that size. Okay, Okay, from that oval go to about the center of it and you're going to do a smaller oval in the middle. Normally I sketch much later but I want to make sure you guys can see this. Okay, something like that. You guys should be sketching really light. Do several kind of ovals like see how this kind of sh is a sharp turn up. Like normally I do several lines and then I go through and I darken up my best one. I'm having to draw dark just so you can see it well, nicely in here. Okay, so this is the top, that's the frosting, this is kind of the inside of the donut hole there. You're going to draw a vertical line coming down off the side, and then that's going to kind of curve around, kind of mimicking the curve of the top of the frosting. And then before I finish it, my second donut is sort of overlapping, so I'm actually going to start get, getting that in there. So coming off the edge of this, I'm just going to draw a little diagonal line for the edge of the next donut. And then once I have that in there, I can close up the, the side of this donut. Okay, again, do some light lines and then look at them. See which one is, seems the most accurate or the best looking. And then darken it. But don't darken it too much because we're actually going to be erasing these lines. But you do want to darken it just so you can see where your most accurate lines are. Okay. So we have this other donut kind of started here. Okay, so this is the top. So now what we're going to do is we're going to draw another oval coming off the top of this. This one is a lot more circular because this second donut is sort of tilted up and tipped. 
So it is facing us more, so it's not as oval as this one that's facing the ceiling. This one's tipped up and facing us, so it's going to be more circular. So again, do a few of them just to establish about the size and the arc of, arc of it. And once you feel like it looks pretty good, you can kind of make it a little more permanent. But again, you are going to erase these lines for the most part before you shade, so you don't have to go too crazy with darkening them, just enough so you can see it. Okay. Now you want the two sides of the donut to be parallel. So this angle that you did here, you're doing that same angle off of here, and then again rounding it down. Try not to get too angular. So if you find you're being too sharp, just you know go around, correct your mistakes as you go. Okay, and just like with the other donut, you're gonna have the inside kind of the same sort of circle. So that's a very flat oval, flat oval, this is a rounder, rounder oval, closer to a circle, and as is that one. Okay, so there's number two. All right, the third one is also tilted. So we're gonna do the same type of thing. It's not overlapping quite as much, but same idea here. Sorry, that was a little too flat looking. Okay. Pause and correct as much as you need to. I very rarely get things right the first time, so I don't expect you guys to either. Okay. So the next one again is kind of coming off the first. Mark out what you think is a good circle. Hey, look at the proportions. So if you think your donut looks too tall or too short, you know, you guys see donuts, I'm sure you know what the approximate proportions of a donut would be. But they are all different, so there is no like one perfect right shape. You're just kind of looking at it and asking yourself if it needs to be taller, skinnier, rounder, and just adjust as you go. Okay, so there are my three donuts. I'm also going to sort of map out um, the shadows that they're casting. So the light source is coming from the left, so all our shadows are falling to the right. So starting with this guy, the shadow starts from underneath him, and it's just sort of an oval that comes about halfway up the, uh, the body of the donut, as you would call it. Okay, the next one, because the donut's tilted, the shadow is sort of tipped up as well, so it's kind of going diagonally up into the next one. And then I, I like to mark where it hits, and kind of comes back over. So it does fall onto this donut as well. Next one, same thing. Okay, kind of hits. And then because now we're going from side to top, the shadow kind of gets skewed and comes around like that. Okay, so make your adjustments. Uh, this has to be spot on perfect, but it is really helpful to have it mapped out. And then once you have it, we'll start shading. So before you shade, um, oil pastels, because they're so kind of waxy and oily, um, they do have a level of transparency to them. So before you shade, I, I usually do it one at a time. I think it's just because I'm not patient enough to erase everything at once. I'll just erase my lines from my donut. I still want to be able to see it, but you really don't want them super dark because you don't want those pencil lines showing through any more than they need to. So I'm hoping, I think you can still see that pretty well on camera. Um, and you also want to get rid of as much of this eraser dust as you can. The oil pastels themselves create a lot of crumbly pieces on your paper. So the cleaner you can keep it from the beginning, the better. Okay. So I, when I'm shading, I'm a lefty. So I like to work right to left because I don't want to accidentally smear. It does smear like charcoal would. Um, differently because it's a stickier kind of smear so I'm working right to left you can take my concepts here and do the same thing the other way around you know what maybe I'll be nice I will be nice I will do my best not to smear but I will work left to right for your guys sake because I know most of you guys are righties that way when I'm switching colors you can kind of follow along and you don't have to worry about smearing your stuff having to go right to left. Okay. 
So, um, with oil pastels, because they blend, um, I usually like to start with like the most neutral of the colors and sort of mix in. So, I'm gonna start with the donut body and then we'll do the frosting second. So I am going to start with either my neutral brown. If you don't have that, you can start with the reddish brown. Okay, and I'm just gonna kinda get my first coat of coloring in there. It goes on very much like crayon. Um, I'm not pressing super hard because I am layering colors to get this. But I'm not also going so light that it's like really faint. So I am putting some pressure on there. I'm noting where the shadows are. It is darker kind of directly underneath the frosting and also right towards the bottom of the donut. Okay, and then the donut does get lighter towards the left because that's where the light source is. So I am going to press much lighter because I know I'm going to be mixing into it as I move towards the left side of the donut. Okay, now to add some richness, this one brown by itself is kind of a very dull red, so now I'm going to go over that. Terry Wilbert, please report to the cafeteria. Terry Wilbert, thank you. Okay, with some of this reddish color. Still a reddish brown. Just adding some richness. Not pressing too hard. I'm just layering in to give that sort of a warm brown color. And now I'm switching to this kind of yellow ochre-ish color. Now if you don't have this, if you couldn't find one, um, you could just do a light coat of yellow followed by white. It'll give you the same kind of idea, especially now that we have these other browns. So this one is going to be one of my top layers. So I'm sort of scrubbing this in more. And I notice I'm not resting my hand on the paper because I don't want to smear it. So I'm kind of holding this up where you can tilt your hand. And you can see the colors kind of layer and mix to create kind of a new color. Right in there. So this one I'm pressing hard because I want... I don't want any white from the paper to show through. That's what kind of separates these from crayons or a little drier of a medium is it can really coat and sit on the paper very thickly. So you can see how that mixes and kind of creates this nice rich brown color. Um, but I will be adjusting all of these, you know, I'm layering the colors in my best guess of the proportions and how much I need of each, but I pretty much always go back in and sort of mix in to balance out what I put in there. So if you get it right the first time, fantastic. But that's what's great about these is they're so adjustable because you can just keep layering and remixing. So I'm just putting in, I put in a little more of that reddish color. Um, the donut does have sort of a highlight towards the middle of it where it's sort of brighter and whiter. So I am going to go in with some white. Be careful with the white if it's been used with like a blue or something. You can see how the oil pastel kind of holds the color. So you might want to have a scrap paper where you kind of color off whatever might be left on there from the last person who used it. And with the white, you know, it's not very intense. So sometimes you do need to kind of scrub it in there a little bit to make it show up. And you can mix this with your finger as well. I would make sure it's clean, but I can gently rub my finger on here to kind of pull the colors together if they're not mixing too nicely on their own. Okay, so now I have a nice variations of colors. Now this um, artist who created these donuts originally, his name is Wayne Thibode, and he's known for his use of really bright colors. Um, and he did a lot of these pastries and desserts and his colors made him look even more appetizing. So right now I'm taking my red orange and I'm just kind of putting a hit of brighter red orange into this donut just to kind of emulate the way he used color. <laughs> um, if you're getting a lot of these crumples, you can try and blow them off. You can try and flick them off. Um, I do try to avoid wiping them off as much as possible because sometimes it'll smear the color right across the paper and once it's on there, it's really hard to get it off. So. You know, stop every now and then and try and clear your paper of those crumbles. Okay, so I need to get the really rich dark shadow. If you can see the difference, much rich, richer, darker shadows in here. And for that, we are using blue. I do use black occasionally, but blue, especially when mixed with these kind of reddy, orangey browns, creates a much deeper, darker 
shadow than black would, and it's much richer, and it does have those colors of T-Boat in them, too. So I'm just taking this blue, and I'm going lightly sort of underneath the frosting line. Okay, and it should mix in to create a pretty dark dark um, by itself. If it is looking super blue and it's really distracting you, um, once you get the blue on there, you can just overlap it with that reddish brown and it should turn it into a much darker shade again. So don't panic if it's looking very blue and it's throwing off. So just you can work some of that rusty brown color back in and you'll get a nice deep dark shadow there. Okay. The more you do this, the more you'll see it come together. Okay. So I'm also going to do the inside of the donut here. So again, I'm actually, because this goes, if you look at this reference picture, from a pretty extreme light to a pretty extreme dark. So I think I'm going to start with my medium brown, my light brown in here, towards the top. Okay, the light gets into the top of this pretty nicely, but then it does switch to dark pretty fast. Go to my red brown. So I'm kind of separating it just like half and half right now. Okay, and again, you can mix them together with your fingers or you can just kind of rub them the, that right in there. Okay. Going in with my blue to really deepen that shadow. Okay. And again, this is all adjustable. So if you're not sure if you need to add more of one color, then move on and come back to it later. So I'm going to stop that there. Okay, and now for the frosting, um, especially for white, if, if you have any of these outlines that are showing through it maybe a little too much, see if you can erase them better. If you can't, no big deal. Keep in mind these are sketches. The primary goal is for you to learn techniques and build skills and hope they come out looking great. But if there's little things like streaks or smears or smudges, at least you have practiced and learned from making those. I don't want you guys to be too hard on yourselves. We are only halfway through the year. Okay, so the frosting, I'm going to start off by getting, giving it a nice heavy coat of white. I am being careful not to streak too much into, you know, the donut colors that I just did. But if you do, it's, especially because this is a T-Bode copy that we're doing, it's not really a bad thing because he has so many streaks and touches of color throughout his paintings that it actually is something we're going to add in anyways, is little smears of color. So it really would not be the end of the world. And it might even help your drawing. So some people wonder why you color white on white. And I don't know if you can tell so much from the camera. But you can tell the white that's colored in from the white from the paper. It does look more rich and more finished. Um, but we also are going to layer in some kind of accents. You can tell on this one. Maybe you can't. I don't know. There are little hints of pink and yellow reflecting off this frosting. So we're going to add those in now. So... You don't have to be exactly where mine are. And get those. I'm just getting some of those crumblies off. So I'm going to very, very lightly in just some semi random places get some streaks of pink kind of hit in here. And then a little corner of yellow. Um, some really pale blue. That light sky blue, Robin's egg blue could look really nice in certain spots as well. But just really, really small hints of them. I know my camera's barely picking it up. And you can always add more. But then once you get it in, again, you can blend it with your finger. Or if you're worried that your finger's got gunk on it or whatever, you can run on top with the white and kind of scrub that white in top, over top, in top, on top. And it'll sort of mix the colors together. And you'll have some sort of tinted frosting that has sort of reflections of all these colors around it on it. And this will look even better once our background is in as well. Okay. One of my favorite things about Thibaut's paintings are his really, he's got really nice colorful shadows. Um, and they're primarily using blues. So where that shadow is marked out, throwing in some blue. I'm just going to go straight in with blue, filling in that section. Now in some areas, this blue alone is not heavy, deep, dark enough to work for the entire shadow, so there are some mix-ins we're going to do. Um, he often likes to kind of outline or accent his shadows with something bright, so I'm kind of running right along that edge with this red-orange. 
seems silly and it definitely seems like an unnatural thing to do but the way he does that kind of throughout the paintings really pulls them together and makes them special and then I'm working in this rusty brown overlapping the blue and that gives you again that really deep shadow not throughout but more kind of in this little cavern where light isn't really sneaking in between those two donuts so you can kind of mix them together using the pastels themselves or with your fingers but that's really it you don't have to overdo it too much once you have that in there you might decide if you need to get heavier or darker on the donut itself to separate the two or you can leave it or you can move on and always come back to it so that's donut number one okay donut number two um, is a little brighter in the first donut overall it's got a nice really bright highlight there so we're going to start with that kind of yellow brown color and again if you don't have this yellow brown you can start with a light coat of yellow and cover it with white and then you can work in the other browns so i'm going to oh see i almost forgot get rid of the pencil lines best you can okay if you made them too dark don't worry about it it's not anything that's going to make you have to start over I'm not necessarily going to take off points for it or anything, but it is something where I want you to just learn from it and remember to either sketch a little lighter next time or when you trace over your correct lines just to be a little less aggressive with your pencil. It's all muscle memory stuff. You'll learn how light to sketch. And again, I was sketching a little unusually dark just so the camera could pick it up. I'm being extra careful even with wiping away the eraser little clumps just because now there are oil pastel chunkies on here and I really don't want those to show up any more than they have to. They do smear everywhere if you're not extra careful. Okay, so I'm going to start this with a nice coat of that yellow brown. Um, I do not mind, you know, if your neighbor's got a full stick and you really want one of these to avoid the extra layering of doing yellow and white and brown, um, you can break these in half. I sometimes break them just because they might seem easier to hold or to get inside certain sections, so no problem. Okay, so I'm coloring kind of hard and I am having white spots, but I do know I'm layering more on top of them, so I'm not too worried about the white spots yet. Building up some richness. I'm going to mix in the rusty brown. Sometimes when I'm mixing, I kind of go in a circular pattern to avoid getting like directional streaks and it does I feel like help sort of stir the colors together so I'm going to get this rusty brown in here running along the edge of the frosting uh, I'm going to press a little lighter to sort of fade it out and then again you can blend with your finger or you can let it blend with your next color that you're layering I'm going to start working that into the opposite side bottoms of these donuts will typically all be a little darker as they kind of curve away to the underside of the donut. Okay. T-Boat's got a little hint of that red orange just like you did in the other donut to bring some brightness in. So I'm putting that on the edge, a little bit in the transition. Sometimes if you press too hard it does sort of scrape away. <sighs> some of the oil pastel that you colored on. So you really got to learn to just pay attention to your pressure and if it's mixing or if it's scraping away and what you want it to do so you'll learn to adjust sometimes if you need to uh, mix in and you're finding it scraping away a lot if you just let it sit for a little while it tends to um almost dry a little bit and layer a little nicer okay so i'm gonna just put in a little bit of this neutral brown too this kind of straight brown color um i don't think you really have to but if you feel like it's a little too reddy, orangey, yellowy, warmish, and you just want some kind of neutral brown in there, you can work some into spots. Okay, I'm going back to this. And I'm sort of going to overlap all those other things and pull some of those colors in towards the center. Blend them together a little more. So oil pastels are a little more forgiving. With some materials, it really matters which one you do first and which one you do last. And it does matter with oil pastels a bit, but they definitely 
just a little more wiggle room for how you decide to place things so you don't have to be so nervous about like doing the wrong color in the wrong order especially if you are willing to wait a little bit and let those colors sort of stiffen up between layers okay um, I am going to do a touch of white sometimes the white even though I don't feel like it's necessary to lighten it does sort of I don't know, pull things together and make them look a little more finished that's a good blender if you can stand to lighten things a little bit it does sort of give things a little more body okay and just as before a little bit of blue mostly to the direct underside very bottom of the donut, maybe a little bit of the edge. Okay. A little bit here where that showed us shadow sort of starts to overlap. Not too crazy though. Okay. And right along the edge of this frosting. Okay, that frosting creates kind of a lip and actually casts a small shadow on the body of the donut. Okay, now moving on to the inside same sort of process it's darkest towards the innermost part fading to lightest towards the top of the inside of that donut hole okay you can sort of blend together naturally and then layering some blue work it's really dark okay. so that looks right now like it's transitioning from that blue to that yellowy brown so I'm going to add in a little more of this red brown just to transition again you can blend with your fingers if you want or them yourselves okay. all right so this one has chocolate frosting so I am going to start with the uh, neutral kind of brown um, you can definitely if you don't have this neutral brown you can start with this one and then you're going to put a little bit of blue throughout so just a tiny bit of blue on top of this will darken that up but if you have this color, then that will work. So I'm going to press pretty hard and get that on because it is, for the most part, a pretty solid color. There are other colors in there to give it the shine. But we can layer those all in on top. Okay, again, make sure you're lifting your hands so you're not smearing what you had done previously. Even if you're a lefty or a righty, you really got to pay attention with these. Okay, and they are kind of thick, so... You want to try not to have like a, a halo around spots. You want to color right up to them, even if you sort of can't see because they are really thick and it's hard to tell when you're getting close to something. Just do your best. And again, you can always layer over, pull colors back in after. Okay. Now what I'm going to do now is I did mark out this shadow that was cast on there. And I'm afraid if I color the whole thing, I'll sort of lose it. Not that I couldn't redraw it, but if you're worried about losing your shape, you can give it a real light coat of blue now. And that way, when you mix that in, you'll sort of see the difference in the colors. Again, I don't know if the camera will pick it up, but it will help you sort of remember where that shadow was. The camera doesn't quite pick it up, but I can see it myself. Um, you could also do it with a black. That might be a little more aggressive than using the blue but if you're having trouble seeing it you can always add it back in so while well, it's fresh in my mind I can sort of putting the blue on top is way more effective okay. and if you're not sure how to press then just start light you can always add in more later and while I have that blue I'm going to continue in that sort of shadow from the frosting and then I'm going to enhance areas that I think need to be enhanced. So the inside of this donut, that cavern, I want to get that much darker. If the blue itself isn't doing it, you can go back to the red, back to the blue. And again, sometimes if things aren't layering nice, it just needs a minute for that oil to sort of, doesn't quite dry up, but it does lose sort of stickiness in it. It will layer better if you give it a minute. So putting a little more blue in over here where it's moving away from the light source. And this will really come out once we add some highlights to it. It's looking very kind of dull and drab now. So um, we're going to use a few different colors for the highlights. We're actually going to throw a little pink in there. 
Okay, lots of colors are very reflective, so the next one has pink frosting, so there's no reason why that color might not bounce off and kind of reflect off of any shiny surface surrounding it. So frosting tends to be a little bit on the shiny side. I forgot over here, we have a little bit of dark on that frosting. And I'm going to get to my white. White's going to be the most intense, obviously, thing to make it look shiny. Okay, some of those are going to be real sharp and kind of just sit there. Some of them are going to kind of be some more subtle and fade away. So there's no need to make yours exactly like mine. Some of these are little spots from like where there might be overhead lights. Some of them are streaks. And again, if you're not sure if it looks good, if you need to add more, then I usually say just wait. Wait until it's done. Put more in if you feel like it's not quite enough. If you're not sure, there's no point in rushing a decision. It may not be the right one. I also like to work in a little bit of the other browns just to give it a little bit of richness. The more I've gotten into art, the more I've realized very few things are one solid color. They're usually layers of colors or mixtures of colors. Okay, donut number two. Get that cast shadow in there again. We'll start with that just straight bit of blue. Okay, it is overlapping the other donut, so I can kind of get it in there, but I'm going to remember that this section is also where the other donut's sitting, so it's not just the shadow. Okay, and do a little bit of the red brown for the highlighting color here. It doesn't look as bright in my reference picture, and then I am going to overlap this a little bit to add some depth to where it sits right underneath the donut. Okay, something's too, not looking bright enough, or too bright, or too dark. You can add in some of your own colors for sure. I think everyone sees things a little differently, so. If you think what I've told you to do is too dull or too bright or too light, definitely use your judgment and adjust things as you see fit. But I'll call that donut number two for now. Still some changes I would probably want to make, but for now I'm good. Okay, so I'm going to move on to donut number three. Okay, this one is also a little brighter than the first one and lighter, so I think I am going to start with this yellow brown, but there's no distinct right or wrong. Okay. And again, these do carry some of their other colors, and sometimes that's good if you're going to mix in those other colors anyways. Sometimes I don't worry about it, but if it were carrying some like blue or something I wouldn't want on this highlighted area, <coughs> excuse me, I would clean it off before I colored with it. See there, it dropped some brown in, but that's okay because I was going to mix that in anyways. Okay. So I'll be mainly placing this where I see the donut colors are kind of the lightest and brightest. I'll switch over to... Ooh, see like that put in some dark in there. Um, you can sort of scrape off oil pastel, so if you do make a big mistake, um, you can use your nail or anything that's sort of sharp to kind of dig under it. It won't completely remove it from the paper, but it should remove enough of it that you can sort of layer over it without too much of a problem. So these two browns are alone are pretty warm and bright, and that's where this uh, neutral brown comes in to kind of balance out the warmth of them. Okay. If you're not sure how to press, like I said, start lightly. You can always add pressure on. this tan color. Use it to pull and mix everything that I've layered together. Don't 
panic if it pulls too much and if it gets muddier than you wanted it to. So these are very layerable and adjustable. And sometimes what looks weird at first actually is really nice in the end, so don't immediately think you've done something terrible if it doesn't look right right away. Sometimes your brain just needs to look at it for a while and it actually comes out the way you want it. Okay. So like before, I'm adding a little hint of color and richness, so I'm throwing in some of this red-orange in a few spots. And then, like I've done before, I'm going to scribble off some of this white because it is kind of mucky. A little bit of white to pull all the colors together, sort of. I think that white is a little too almost dull, so I am going to go back in with some of this yellow, just to add some brightness back in. And I think that helped. And while I'm at it, I kind of want to do that here too. Don't be afraid to jump around. If you notice something that you feel needs to be corrected on something you finished, while it's on your mind, there's no reason why you can't go back in and work on it. You don't necessarily have to always work right to left or left to right. Okay. Now this one's my favorite frosting to work on. The pink. So, again, if you have a lot of dust, shake it off, blow it off, whatever you need to do. Oh, you know what I'm going to do inside of the donut while I'm working with the browns. Okay, same thing, sort of stacking the two kinds of brown and then getting a little depth by adding in some blue. Okay. While I have the blue in my hand, just sort of layering it in where I need some shadows to start. Okay, and dip deep in the shadow that was cast on here from the other donut. Okay, so I'm putting a pretty solid coat of pink throughout. I'm going to layer in the highlights, layer in the shadowy colors. Okay, you can see I'm kind of holding it straight up and down, so I'm not scraping anything I've already put on. So the pink is mostly filled in, and I hope now you can see like the difference between just a flat frosting that has no highlights, no shadows, and these other ones, which I know the white doesn't get picked up very well, but the dimension that gets added by adding some dark and light to those frostings really are what make them look shiny and yummy and realistic, give them the right kind of texture. Okay. So I'm going to work the white in almost everywhere, um, but... I'm not going to be too neurotic about hitting every spot because having those different values of pink will be good. And then I'm going to note that this chocolate donut does cast a bit of a shadow on the frosting here. So I'm going to try and avoid getting white or that shadow would be falling. Okay, make sure you kind of fill in any gaps where you might have missed coloring. I'm going to very, very lightly with this blue get a little bit of a shadow established. You could also, if you're worried about pressing too hard with the blue, go in with the purple. 
because red and blue would make purple. Um, but if you can keep a light touch, just a little bit of blue on there, it'll sort of create a purple. And then if it's too much, or if it's just too uh, streaky looking, that's when you can go with your finger or back with the pink or the white and sort of mix them together to make it more smooth. This purple, I don't mind pulling through this whole area that's supposed to be sort of shadowed. And also, I thought this sketch would be a good one because, you know, these are this is a painting that we're trying to mimic with a drawing. So anytime things are looking a little streaky, instead of being smooth, it works because this guy's painting style is very streaky. He's not blending everything perfectly. He kind of slops on the colors a lot and just lets them sit there. So it works out usually. to our shadow starting with a plain blue now this one does sort of uh, blend into almost a tealy or a green color but I am going to put the blue everywhere because it's not like a, a, a pure green and green is made out of blue anyway so some depth to that shadow. I think this red brown really does uh, kind of deepen it a lot and if it doesn't get as dark as you want I think layering the red brown and then going back on top with the blue really is a uh, very adequate. Okay so I do want some kind of plain blue so I'm just gonna pull these colors together a little bit. Oh yeah I never had you get green you can pause and get a green sort of layer on top. Okay. And then I do think this uh, rusty brown is a good for that outline-y kind of highlight around the shadow that he has. Okay, So there are three donuts. Now to make these look really nice and finished, the last thing you're going to do is color in the background. Um, if you want to do your own colors, I've got no problem with that. So all I'm doing is I'm establish, establishing sort of like a horizon line. So I'm separating the wall from the table. So you can kind of pick any area that's sort of through the donuts. Just make sure the cast shadows are still on the table. So the line has to be above where those shadows are. That's kind of the only requirement. And then obviously you want it to look like it's carrying on through consistently. So about the same height on both sides. Okay. So... The painting I worked from was sort of a very pale pink against a very pale blue. So if you wanted to do the same, um, this is where these big thick ones come in handy. What I did is, you know, I kind of laid them on their side as best I could and did a very, very light, as consistent and as even as I could. And this, this is kind of hard with the oil pastels because unless you scrub, it is very kind of textured and uneven. So the best you can, trying to get a light but even coat. You could start by putting down a solid coat of white and mixing into it. Um, I feel like it's sort of a toss up which is better. So if you wanted to try it one way for the top and another way for the bottom, and you see I got some darks and that's, that's going to happen. You know, Do your best to avoid those crumbs getting mixed into your background, but it's going to happen, I imagine, to all of you, so don't let that destroy anything. So I just smeared some of my thing there. Um, like I said, you can sort of scrape it up, but it's going to happen, and if you scrub and blend enough over it, you can disguise a lot of it. And worst case scenario, if you have a million messy blobs and streaks and crumbs all over this, you can always cut out your donuts with the shadows and put them onto a clean piece of paper. You just gotta be careful going up close to your donuts. I'm going fast because you're watching. This should be like a time lapse for this part. But you guys can definitely take your time more. I'm not gonna have these due until the following Friday, so not this coming Friday, but the next Friday. So 
You can really sort of work on these over time if you need to. Okay. So you could do the top, mix in the white, and then do the bottom with the pink and mix in the white, or you can get both colors laid on. I do think it probably makes more sense to keep one area clean. So again, with your white, you tend to carry some colors onto it. So get it as clean as you can. And then what I do is I just kind of scrub. So I'm pressing and rubbing in a circular motion that will blend the blue together pretty well. You're going to have streaks and unevenness no matter what to some extent. I'm definitely not an expert with oil pastels and I actually never use them for a real full drawing until I started teaching. So a lot of this is self-taught. So I'm sure if some of you guys took some time of practice you could become better than I am because I really haven't got a lot of lessons on them or anything. Just what I've learned from what I've done on my own. So they weren't my first strength. So any, any skills I have I definitely earned with this. It was not a natural I actually hated oil pastels the first few times I tried them. They're, I thought they were really hard to control, but no one taught me, so. So even if your blue color isn't really pushing anywhere, the white does sort of soften the, the look of the streaks. And don't forget, this is the background. You know, you want it to look good. You want everything to be as good as possible. But keep in mind, people are really going to be looking at the donuts and those colorful shadows. And what's above it and below it is just there to make the whole drawing look more finished. You're going to have a lot of these little crumblies. So I do clean your paper off and... Okay, same thing with pink. We are almost done. Again, if you wanted to try out different colors, you can. Um, I do like the idea of blue and pink because it does sort of create some unity. You got the pink frosting and the highlights of pink on all three donuts. And you have the blue shadows on all three donuts. So I do think those are good color choices to sort of pull this whole thing together. And those are things that, you know, working artists think of. They don't just kind of, they don't do too much random. Some artists do go by instinct. But most of the time there's a lot of thought and practice and layout sketches to check out colors to see what is best. People think it just kind of comes out of people without practice, but there's a lot of thought and practice that goes into these things that makes them good. Now if you're really not happy with your background and you want to perfect this, you can always go back on top with your pink and your blue to even out the colors. Just don't make yourself crazy. One of my goals is for you guys to learn to enjoy this process, even if you're not the best at it or if you want to get better. You should still try to enjoy the process. Okay. Obviously slow yourself down when you're getting close to those donuts. Just peeling off some paper here. Oh, that will happen too. I break these things all the time. That's another reason why I do tend to color up and down a lot with oil pastels is they are oily, so they are pretty soft, and if you press too much on them at an angle, they'll break, and maybe you've learned that by now. Try not to do that. I hate when I do that. Okay, again, caution going around these little sides. And, you know, there it is. It's finished. Now, for my personal standards, I would go through and clean this up and, you know, try and even out some of the coloring on here. But this is what you're going for for a finished thing. You can always adjust your donuts a little bit, but there you go. One and then two. My first one's better, but I think I took my time on it a little more. And I wasn't talking the entire time, so I concentrated more. So good luck. Make sure you're asking questions.